their sons came rushing in crying that their brother is lying unconscious on the village pathway that a heavy coconut fell on his head on their way back home Nkoli rushed to the scene hoping nothing serious has happened to her third son and on getting there she found his lifeless body Once upon a time, in a distant land, there lived a young boy named Amadi Oha. Amadi was the only son and child of his father, Oha, who passed away when Amadi was a toddler. Amadi was raised by his mother and he was known to be a very stubborn and wayward child. He did not obey his mother when he was corrected and kept bad company this continued till amadi grew up and became a responsible man who later went on to marry the love of his life unkoli during their years of being married they were blessed with wonderful children amadi and unkoli were both amazing parents and they had five sons they are well known in the village for their kindness as they helped others the best way they could. Nkoli owns a shop in the market where she sells her wares and usually gets assisted by her sons after the close of school. Amadi was a renowned palm wine tapper whose wine is mostly sold out before it touches the ground. Amade, just like every other young man, had his own past and experiences of growing up. Amadi and his friends caused a lot of havoc while growing up. But now they are all grown. They have put their foolishness aside and become focused with what matters more to them, which is family. Amadi's sons now were all at their prime and youthful age, full of energy and vigor. Their mother, Nkoli, doted on her son so much and they were her pride as a woman. They planned to have more children, but Nkoli had complications after having her fifth child and was told that she wouldn't be able to have any more children. Though sad because she's sure she won't have a daughter, Nkoli nevertheless thanked the gods for blessing her with five amazing sons. One day, Amadi came home to meet one of his sons sick. He was so sick that he was coughing up blood from his mouth and from his nose. Amadi and his wife Unkoli rushed their son to the medicine man and no cure could be found for the ailment and before it got dark that night they lost their child to the cold hands of death. The wailing from Oha's family could be heard round the community as people trooped in to find out what happened. On hearing about the loss of their son they consoled and sympathized with them. Not so long, their child was buried and they moved on. One day, while Unkoli was at her store, they rushed to inform Unkoli that one of her sons slipped while playing with a friend and hit his head on a stone. They rushed their injured son to get treatment, but the injury was a very bad one that there was nothing much they could do, and they eventually lost this son to death. This was such a sad news for the family, and Unkoli naturally wondered if someone was out for her family. How can she lose two sons in a space of a month? It was too much for her to bear. One early morning, on Amadi's way to get some palm wine, an old woman walked up to him and asked him to confess all his sins, else the wrath that will befall him 
will be too much to bear. And he asked the old woman what she is talking about. She said, it doesn't matter how long ago this happened. He will bear the wrath of what he has committed. Amadi thanks the woman and walked away. Later in the day, he pondered on what the old woman said to him. Amadi was disturbed and wondered if the old woman's warning had anything to do with the death of his sons. They fixed a date and buried their son. The family were just trying to pick the pieces of their broken hearts when one day, two of their sons came rushing in crying that their brother is lying unconscious on the village pathway that a heavy coconut fell on his head on their way back home Nkoli rushed to the scene hoping nothing serious has happened to her third son and on getting there she found his lifeless body the pain was too much that Nkoli fainted immediately she had to be rushed to the medicine man as she passed out for days before waking up. By this time, it had dawned on Amadi that the warning the old lady gave him concerning a doom has already started and was about to wipe out his entire family from the face of the earth. Amadi went to seek the counsel of a juju man who told him that there is something blocking him from seeing what is wrong with him and asked him to consult with a powerful seer located at the outskirts of their village. Amadi decided to go the following week as he needed to lay his son to rest. The following week, just as he prepared to leave the next day, News came reaching him that one of the young ones out of the two remaining drowned in the village river while swimming. This became too much for Amadi to handle and he thought about killing himself. He wondered who was after him and what has he done to deserve such punishment. Immediately the news got to his wife Nkoli. She became mentally unstable. As this tragic news messed up her head and she wasn't saying anything anyone could make meaning of. At this point in time, Amadi became so desperate and took his last son to his mother to please look after him and not let him go anywhere while he proceeds to find a solution to their problem. People had already started to gossip and call them cursed and no one wanted to associate with them for the fear of the curse being passed on to them. The news of Amadi Oha's woes got to the king and he summoned the palace seer to find out the problem with the Oha's family. The seer told the king that Amadi committed an atrocity many years ago which has come to haunt him now. Meanwhile, Amadi had journeyed to a faraway kingdom to consult with a powerful juju man. Immediately he entered the shrine. The man told him his reason for being there and asked him if he remembers the atrocity he committed years ago in his farmland. Memories came flooding back to him and he remembered that years ago when he was still young and foolish that he met a strange girl on his farmland who asked him for directions instead of him to help her out he raped her and left her there but he did not do it intentionally as he was so drunk and when he remembered what he did he went back to the farmland and he could not find a single trace of the young lady he had met well the juju man told him that what he did to her wasn't just raping her but she hit her head on a stone and was bleeding out that she used her last strength till she was able to locate the shrine of their village deity and laid a curse on him that he will lose all his children in untimely death he cried and asked what could be done to save his family 
The juju man told him that he had to offer his only child to the deity of the village shrine as a sacrifice and there he will worship and serve the deity for all his life. If not, his only son will die. Amadi cried and cried. That means he will be childless. The juju man asked him to hurry that the spirit of death is hovering around his son and will soon consume him. Amadi left for his home and narrated all that was told to him to his mother. The mother started wailing and told him, I asked you to live a good life, but you would not listen to me. Now see how one of your sins has caught up in you. Amadi was too shattered and his mother told him that the king sent for him the previous day and asked him to come to his palace. Amadi went to the palace with his now only son and the king asked him which atrocity did he commit that has brought such calamity to him. He told the king all that happened in the presence of the elders in council and the chief priest. The king asked that the chief priest goes with the boy to serve the village deity. The king told Amadi that he would have given him a worse punishment for his crime, but it was obvious he is already reaping the fruit of what he has done. There, yeah, he was declared an outcast and everyone was barred from having anything to do with him. Back in the village, no one wanted to associate with him, not even his friends. He wondered how he will live, knowing he caused the death of his children and his wife is mentally ill because of him. He decided to take matters into his own hands and went to a tree and hung himself with a rope around his neck on a tree and took his life. This brought the end to his lineage as he was the only son of his late father and no child to continue his lineage. News of the death of Amadi went round the community and the king proclaimed that Amadi's death should serve as a lesson to the younger generation that there is always a consequence for every action you take no matter your age and no matter how long you go the end the lesson to be learned from this story is whatever evil you do in life always has a dare repercussion be careful how you live your life so you don't end up with regret don't take advantage of anyone in a vulnerable situation because you feel you can above all live a good and worthy life worth emulating whatever you do in the past has a way of haunting you in the future thank you so much for watching this story i hope you enjoyed it please not forget to click on the subscribe button as it helps us grow share this video to your loved ones do not forget to click on the like button turn on the post notification so you'll be the first to know when i drop a new story and leave us a comment i will see you in my next video till then bye